Welcome to National Best Financial Network's Risk Management for Business series. This video will discuss our three-point plan for wealth protection, specifically strategy number two. Of course, the lawyers must have their way first, so please review this disclaimer, which points out that this presentation is for informational purposes only and should not be considered as a viable solution without proper professional advice surrounding the investment and tax strategies. Mr. Joe Business has spent over 15 years building his business. He has an operating corporation that does ongoing consistent revenue and by all accounts he is considered a success. Of course this could be Jane Business as well and the business could be a manufacturer, a wholesaler, a retail outlet, or could even be a professional corporation such as a doctor, a dentist, or an engineer. Our strategy can work with any of these corporate structures. But Joe did not come to success without help. He expanded step by step, carefully planning all the way. To control his costs, he hired an accountant. He hired a warehouse manager to look after inventory. And he hired a marketing company to help build his brand and grow his client base. He hired sales coaches to improve his sales staff and even a personal coach to help him stay on track and stick to his business plan. This resulted in profit. In fact, Joe is making so much money, there are profits left over every year that he does not need to operate the company or to pay for his lifestyle. These are called retained earnings. Joe and his family have a very nice life and his employees are happy because he has a good benefits plan for them and a group savings plan. Year after year, the retained earnings from profit keep growing and growing inside of his operating corporation. Before long, Joe has accumulated a million dollars. To Joe, this is money that is meant for retirement in about 10 years. Joe asks his accountant if they should invest it so that it can grow. His accountant is not an investment advisor and so he defaults to a safe strategy, tells Joe just to put it into a 10-year GIC since that's when Joe is thinking of retirement. So what happens if Joe does invest in a GIC inside of his corporation? Well, a 10% GIC currently yields about a 2% rate of return per annum. Well, if we compound this rate of return over 10 years, Joe will end up with about 200, almost $219,000. That's not bad. Not a bad rate of return given the minimal interest rate. At least Joe's keeping up with inflation. Or is he? Let's see what Joe's actual return is inside the corporation after 10 years. Wow, that's a difference. Less than half of the expected rate of return. Well, why is this? Well, we can thank these two folks. They got together last year and in 2016 they decided that the tax payable on passive income in private companies is going to be, wait for it, 50.7%. Governments do not want to encourage companies to invest their retained earnings to earn passive income. They provide the corporate structure so that businesses can grow, hire employees, hire services, and buy inventory. In other words, keep the economy growing. So they actively discourage passive investing of retained earnings by taxing it heavily. So what do we do when it's raining down tax on us? What umbrellas exist that could shelter Joe from this downpour of taxes? Not to mention that the money inside his operating company is at risk to creditors should the company ever be sued. Well, where can Joe find solutions to these issues? Well, after asking around, Joe is introduced to Randy McCord, founder of National Best Financial Network, and George Craven, the owner of Monarch Tax Law. Well, they get right to work to assist Joe with his investment conundrum. Firstly, George explains that Joe should consider setting up a holding company to house his retained earnings. He explains there are many good reasons for this structure. One is to help creditor-proof his corporate savings. Another is to ensure that 
his company retains its status as a qualified Canadian controlled corporation for tax purposes in case they decide to sell the business someday. Also, it allows Joe to have different shareholders than those in the operating company. And this can help with income splitting and estate planning. George also thinks that Joe should set up a discretionary trust. Ah, but that's a discussion for another day. Once George has the holding company in place, Randy enters the picture and explains that it's time for a universal life policy, which will act as a perfect tax haven for Joe's retirement funds. And Joe says, life insurance? I don't need life insurance. But Randy convinces Joe that he should at least look at the concept and consider this as an investment shelter rather than just simply a life insurance product. After his, his initial skepticism, Joe agrees to listen to the concept. Well, the strategy involves a 10-year investment inside the universal life policy where growth will be tax deferred and Joe will be able to invest in equity-based indices in Canada, the US and overseas. Well, wait a minute, says Joe. The reason I was going to invest in GICs is so that I would not lose my money. This stock market-based stuff scares me and I don't like it. Well, not to worry. This particular strategy has no downside. Wow, what a product. In fact, this product is called a guaranteed market indexed account. And it's a BMO product, a name that we all know well. Well, what is the return on this investment? When BMO backtested the strategy over the last 30 years, they never failed to produce a 6 to 8% rate of return for the investor. In the last two years of going live, they have produced between a 6 and 6.5% 6 rate of return. So let's just say that over the 10 years, the plan actually produced a 7% rate of return as an example. That would produce a 10-year compounded return that would leave Joe's holding corporation with $1.829 million. Amazing. And of course, it's all tax deferred. Better yet, the strategy is built to allow Joe's holding corporation to access the majority of those funds tax-free. Amazing. Well, another question that arises is, what happens if Joe passes away after the 10 years? Well, the holding company would then receive the tax benefit of $4.955 million, almost $5 million. Once again, it's a tax-free benefit that can now be distributed to the shareholders of the holding company, Joe's spouse, his children, or any other shareholder of the hold co. Wow, what a powerful strategy. This very powerful strategy we call the Universal Life GMIA Single Deposit Strategy. But the reason we're shouting this strategy from the rooftops right now is that it will disappear. It's going to disappear as of January 1st, 2017. And since it's a life insurance based product, business owners need to get educated about this product today. It has many other applications that will also be grandfathered, but applications must be submitted well before the end of the year. So call now. Our team is ready to serve business owners throughout Alberta and National Best has representatives across Canada in case your business resides in another province. Our corporate business specialists are ready to assist your business today. So let us protect your wealth. Call now.